you very much, Anton. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's lovely to be here and to be able to share. Um, it would be nice if the IT worked. There we are. And to be able to share some of the work that the Scottish Council of Deans and the university members of the council have um, involved with in relation to the first attainment challenge and to look forward to the second Scottish attainment challenge that we're now all working in. Um, what I want to do this morning is I want to, to talk about connections. I want to talk about connections between the research in universities and the development of policy nationally and of your practice as you complete our student education programmes and begin your career as teachers. It's a, understanding the, these connections is what brings into focus the needs of learners in relation to poverty and inclusion, which you'll have the opportunity to um, hear more about in the following workshops. The Scottish Attainment Challenge has provided a focus since 2016 for the work done by teachers and schools in relation to poverty and inclusion. The first phase of the challenge ended in 2020 with a continuation for the final year of the project in 2020 to 21, while work was undertaken by the Scottish Government through civil servants and Education Scotland, working with representatives from across Scottish education to reshape and refocus the attainment challenge for the next five years. As students and teacher educators, it's the policy that guides education in schools and local authorities. And it's what informs your practice on placement and your work in your future career as a teacher. What I want to do this morning is explore the development of the Refreshed Attainment Challenge with you, and in doing so, demonstrate the role of research and universities in the relaunch and the impact of some of that research on your experiences as student teachers. Closing the attainment gap has been the centre of education policies of the last and the current SNP government. That's where the 10 year timeline overall comes from, two sessions of this, two five year sessions of the Scottish Parliament. And in fact, closing the attainment gap has been at the centre of SNP education policy since Nicola Sturgeon became leader of the party in 2014. It's been used as a focus for a range of innovations and developments across education policy in Scotland. And it was launched by the First Minister, this is an extract from her speech, at the Western Hills Education Centre in Edinburgh in August 2015. The Education Centre on the WEC, as it's still known, is a school in an area of multiple deprivation. And at that point in its history, um, it was a school where pupils had achieved, they, they closed the gap between what they were expected to achieve in school and what they did actually achieve. And it was that challenge that the First Minister at that point set the rest of us across Scotland uh, to not necessarily follow the practice in that particular school, but to aim high for all our pupils and particularly those living in poverty and in areas of multiple deprivation. The policy was, was developed very quickly, led by Education Scotland and the National Improvement Framework 
was in place by February 2016. The National Improvement Hub was created as a space to, um, to connect the work that was ongoing in different local authorities and in, different, in each school, providing learning materials, information, guidelines, um, all easily accessed through the hub. And it continues to have that role uh, today with the new uh, policy. Attainment officers were appointed, Education Scotland staff were appointed um, to support the challenge. Um, they are part of the new challenge as well. And um, they were based with the regional improvement collaboratives, the RICs, but they're also all, but they were working particularly with local authority, with individual local authorities, and through that with, with schools and teachers in that authority. Funding for the work initially went to identified authorities who had the greatest number of areas of multiple deprivation and some specific schools. But this was later expanded with the introduction of the Pupil Equity Fund, which I'm sure you've all heard of. It's, it's what most teachers are involved with or know about within their school. And it's what you bump up against when you're in school on, on placements. Um, PEF. That fund was di distributed um, through uptake of free school meals and, and was designed to be used by head teachers in each school um, working with the needs of the individual pupils and the wider community. What the policy did bring was a range of very specific targets, targets set at local authority level and then at school level and then within each classroom for each pupil. So everyone involved in education in Scotland was, was part of this policy and working towards it. And that's why it's such an important policy to explore and understand the relationship between the way the government has established a policy and the ongoing work in relation to poverty and inclusion. It's a policy that's in place across the whole country and in all schools. And the hub, as I mentioned, is the way that, um, that we connect up into it from schools, from universities, that that's where information is, is stored and shared and practice is shared. Um, this is a quote from Education Scotland about the purpose of the hub. And the hub in itself has, has worked well. And it does provide connections to research. Um, for example, you will find in the, in the hub um, this, this paper uh, by Ellis and Edward Sosu um, from the University of Strathclyde. It was a piece of um, research that they did funded by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation. Uh, is still available through the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, but it's also still available in the um, in the National Improvement Hub. It was one of the key pieces of research that supported the development of the policy in the beginning, establishing that connection between research, policy, and then practice. And it's that connection between these three areas that, that is so important to, to take into your practice and future careers as a teacher as, as, an, as an, an understanding, as a way of experience and working with policy when you're teaching in school, accessing research, not only when you're following an initial teacher education programme, but also when you continue your professional learning as a teacher and using, using that triangle to inform your practice. It's the strength of those connections 
that supports the work you do as a student teacher and will support your practice as developing practice as a teacher um, in induction year and beyond. Universities have a key role in, in research and that's no less true of education than it is of any other subject. It's the research that's carried out uh, within universities by the lecturers you, you will meet on your uh, programmes that informs the programmes that we teach, it informs the work we do with our partners in education, with our local authority partners, um, it may be joint pieces of work research that's carried out there, and it informs the way that the universities, as providers of initial teacher education, uh, work with the Scottish Government and the development of policy there. The Scottish Council of Deans of Education brings together representatives of all the uh, universities who are involved in providing initial teacher education programmes. And this was a, we, rather, we became involved in the Attainment Challenge project uh, through discussions with the government who funded uh, with Education Scotland this piece of research that we carried out between 2018 and 2021. Um, you'll see from the logos here that not all 11 ITE universities were involved. Um, eight of them had a, uh, capacity so they had people available to be part of the research at the time the project was set up. It was a project that brought us together because we had overarching questions to answer about how, how we worked, what we did in initial teacher education and with our local authority partners for induction year in supporting the development of new teachers. Um, so that they could, they were best prepared and supported to, to work um, with pupils and guide learning in areas of multiple deprivation. So the project that, that we established had an overall focus on pedagogies that work for pre-service and early career teachers. So those of you on ITE programmes and an induction year. And it was about reducing the attainment gap. So the focus at the start, the start of this research, as the focus at the start of the first attainment challenge uh, policy was, was about um, literacy, numeracy, and health and well-being. So it ran for three years. It involved um, all of us in education. We were carrying out research within the universities, but we were carrying out research with our student cohort. Some of you may have been involved in that. Um, we were working with local authority partners and carrying out research in schools with partner schools. And again, in some cases with our students. It was about improving creating, developing, understanding the research base that would support us to provide programmes that were best fitted to prepare you for practice and working within this policy framework. Um, and because of the timing of it, it had a specific emphasis on literacy, numeracy and health and wellbeing. It wasn't about something that was done within a university environment and written up as a paper and stayed there. It was about a much wider conversation. Um, it was about conversations within our own universities, but it was also about conversations with local authorities, with schools, with teachers, with students, and the whole, the wider education um, group across Scotland, everybody involved in education. And that's partly why the, 
the presentation of our, our results and the sharings of our findings and the discussions. It's quite important that that took place through CIRA and the CIRA Connect webinars because we were able to, to reach a much wider audience. So this is about the project itself. Um, there were eight individual projects, research projects, each based in one of the universities involved, excuse me, and uh, four studentships for PhDs or EDs. Um, and we worked together on four overarching research questions. And that was how we pulled together our, what we'd done. It's where we presented the results of the individual projects. And it's where we look to answer these overall questions to inform our practice and future supports. I'm going to start first with a, just a run through of the work that individual universities did, just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, and then I'll come back to the overarching questions. In the University of Aberdeen, they, they worked uh, on, on an, enacting inclusion in practice. Um, their research was about how, with their own students and about how student teachers um, experienced inclusion when on placement, how they used the knowledge that they had from the programme and took that into practice and how they answered questions and challenges in practice. Uh, important work that's already informed um, the ITE programmes in the University of Aberdeen. University of Dundee focused initially on working with, with data from the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation, SIMD data, and about how students, again, student their students on placement in local schools worked with that data to understand the, the schools that were placed in and to be better prepared to support the range of learners that were going to be teaching. They then expanded that project and looked at, at inclusion and equity across their student group of across all their programmes and with lecturers working together to uh, develop a shared understanding of the terms and the way they were enacted in practice and that was then shared with local authority partners. The University of Stirling focused on mentoring and worked with a group of teachers who were mentoring either student teachers or um, uh, newly qualified teachers in their induction year. Edinburgh had a range of projects focusing on learning spaces and the joint design of learning spaces um, and also looking at the use of safe space for uh, sharing experiences um, and work on gardens. Strathclyde focused on the three core areas of lit the curriculum areas of literacy, numeracy, health and wellbeing. Glasgow worked with final year uh, ITE students using practitioner inquiry on placement in areas of multiple deprivation where they used inquiry as a tool to explore different aspects of, of poverty and inclusion. That project had a collaborative aspect where the, the students involved shared the outcomes and developed a wider understanding of the different, their different experiences on placement. Something that the University of Glasgow is building into their programmes going forward. The University of the West of Scotland looked at working with data in school, in particular understanding data, how to use it, um, not so much the SIMD data in this case, but um, starting particularly with secondary students, but then expanding to primary programmes, looking at the data that's collected about, about pupils and their achievements and, and how to understand and work with it as a teacher particularly in relation to target setting. That again has informed their programmes. And in my own institution in the University of the Highlands and Islands, um, we, and this was pre-COVID, uh, established a network to support 
uh, teachers in their induction year. Teachers placed in, in small schools across the area we work with in the north and west of Scotland to provide them with a network to share and plan their responses to working with aspects of poverty and inclusion through the attainment challenge. Um, a network that continued through the pandemic, but the conversations changed slightly um, as we, we finished that project. So all those projects ran separately, but contributed to the way that we answered the four research questions we have, RQ1 to RQ4. So we, we began with a, an audit of, of what we do, um, what we what we current what current practice was. We then worked together to identify what it was particularly worked well that connected to the attainment challenge. And then we broadened our research and used literature uh, to inform us about other pra practices from uh, elsewhere, other pieces of research that could inform what we did. And it was that that then gave us the data combined with our own to take back to our own research projects to try out new ways of um, of providing programmes and supporting teachers in induction year that um, would give them a better range of knowledge and set of skills to uh, improve the engagement and attainment of pupils. So a very big, a big project, but one at the end of the day that, that came down to, to five key themes. Um, we, we worked we worked with the research and with the information from the literature, which is exactly what you do if you're using a practitioner uh, inquiry as part of your programme and it's something you'll do as a teacher as part of your professional learning. Um, we connected those uh, in, in the research project uh, into five key themes and it was those five themes that, that we shared with Education Scotland. We shared with the Scottish Government um, more recently to inform the new the development of the new uh, attainment challenge project. Um, but we also worked with directly in our programmes. The next slide is more for teacher educators than, than people following the programmes, but I've just left it in to demonstrate how we took our themes, we used the the information from our literature search and the, the suggestions of approaches uh, of different, you know, different ways of doing things that have been tried in other countries and reported on to give us then in the final column suggestions about the ways that we were to, we needed to work in our programmes or with um, newly qualified teachers in induction year. It was those themes that um, were mapped to um, the, the CIRA Connect series, where, where we, we pulled together what we'd been doing, we shared some of the researches, and we, we asked questions, and we had a wider discussion with people from across Scottish education. So what these themes did was, was give information back into this new policy. We, sh we shared information, so individuals and universities have taken that information and are working with it, but it also fed into the development of the new policy. So we were looking about, looking to explore in the first theme about how student teachers took the, the, the theoretical and the social and the cultural knowledge into practice something you heard about particularly in the way that University of Aberdeen and Dundee did their research. All of our work um, suggested that the, the importance of developing a caring and caring and respectful professional relationships across education with a focus on the whole child. We recognised in our third theme that, that the, the schooling and the schools and the, the teaching that, that are offered um, need to reflect 
the value and acknowledge the values and the experiences of young children and young people living in the SIMD 1 to 40 areas. All of the work we do in initial teacher education and you do as aspiring or newly qualified teachers is, is connected through the standards and the values um, uh, and linked to social justice. And that absolutely came through in all our research and, and the way that we reported on it. The focus of our work in the university was about making these connections, about cultivating the research policy practice links and the interactions at all levels. And that's why it's important for us to work with you in a way that supports you to develop a research orientated stance and gives you the knowledge and the skills to, to go into practice and then as you develop your, your knowledge and experience, engage in professional dialogue about what you're doing in school and why. As Angela mentioned, you can see the, the webinars um, on the CIRA YouTube channel. Um, so what the research did was it, it contributed to the attainment challenge. It's definitely continued, contributed to ITE programmes. Um, and has begun to develop a wider understanding across Scottish education. The new attainment challenge has a slightly refocused mission. It has a framework, this is an Education Scotland slide, so it's, it has they cheerfully saying as a framework for recovery and accelerating progress. It has enhanced support in the way that Education Scotland is working with local authorities and individual schools and it has a different resource allocation referred to here as a simplified resource allocation. Funding is going into all schools in Scotland to support this work uh, as, as, we, as we now have moved into the second phase of this policy. So what what the new version of the policy does is it continues to emphasise the important contribution that education can make to reduce the impact of poverty. It has a new focus on improving outcomes for children and young people as individuals and the need to collaborate across different services. Um, and it has a, a different structure for governance and reporting um, that the hope of the government is in launching this new policy um, in the year of Scotland stories is that it, the new systems will enable everybody to hear the story of progress that's being made in individual schools, local authorities and nationally. Uh, to continue the work of the, the, this policy. Education Scotland have said that it, it gives us clear direction. Um, I think from a university perspective, it, it, it asks us to continue to follow the direction set in the first policy. It continues to emphasize the targeted nature of support and continues to use targets. Um, both at, in class level individ, for individual pupils and nationally. It has, through the work that Education Scotland and the government have been doing in this relaunch, the work with local authority partners, has uh, begun to develop a deeper shared understanding of what the first policy achieved and where the second policy is going. Uh, and for all of us, it continues to drive a whole system focus on improvement that we're all involved in and we're all part of, whether we're teaching in a university on ITE programmes or you're on a school placement and you're teaching pupils or you move into your career in your induction year. It takes forward those themes that um, that we, we were working with in the universities in our research, and in particular, 
continuing to use the hub to connect theory, theory, policy and experience to cultivate those links and the connections across the system in Scotland um, to take forward professional dialogue between all of us as we all work to close the gap. Tapalev, thank you. Morag, thank you very much. Um, very informative um, keynote for this morning. And I really liked the ideas about the collaboration, the wider conversations and how we, we supported you at CIRA in terms of making that conversation accessible, publicly accessible. I'm thinking about one of the, the ideas about, obviously, for SAC1, all the institutions coming together, that was possibly quite unprecedented. How do you think the universities might come together again as we move into SAC2? Do you think there's that collaborative idea of that remain on the table or? I think, I think we'd all love to do that. Uh, I think we, um, we, we learned a lot as a group of universities working together and it enabled us to, to really focus on, on an area that was key to what we were all doing. Um, but we were able to take things forward individually. Um, we, we continue to be in contact and there's actually a link now between the universities and the attainment officers. Um, we'd love to get involved in, in more research. Of course, involvement in research needs a bit of money. So um, there's no word yet about um, particular funding for research with the new the new attainment challenge, but um, I, I think we're we're hopeful that that something will come out of that, and we can we can take forward the work that that was really successful. Okay, um, this is a, the chance for everybody on the call. If you've got a question, pop it into the chat. If you've got a question at all, you just want to raise your hand up. Feel free to do that as well. We can take some questions for a few minutes. Stephen. <laughs> Morag, thanks very much. Um, this, this, this is this is maybe a question you can only begin to answer because it's one of those difficult ones. Now, I really like the way you connected policy, research, and practice at the beginning, and you, you came back to it at the end, and that was great. How, how are teachers going to access research um, in the future as they go into their teaching career? Because this has been a kind of bugbear of Scottish education for a while. I think that's a huge challenge. Um, and there are, well, there's actually, there are three answers, but who knows exactly what will happen. Um, there's a route to access um, research books and research papers through the GTCS, but it, it's quite clunky, uh, though I haven't been on recently, but it is a way to, to get hold of papers or look up, you know, explore things in the same way as you would do on an ITE program when you were asked to go away and find out about something. Um, there are increasing numbers of um, research reports and papers being stored in the hub. Um, again, perhaps not as easily accessible, um, but I do know because I've set the challenge in UHI to students in UHI, it is possible to, to find, you know, to, to go in and, and locate things um, and, and to explore them. Um, what's more challenging is if, if you've just got an idea about something and you want to, to do what you would do as a, a wider literature search, which you can easily do when you're a university student, you just go into the library systems and, and you, you look up. Um, keywords or you ask questions. Um, the, I think there's a possibility as we go forward and Education Scotland is, is restructured um, that the support for professional learning and the ongoing um, development of, of teachers will perhaps be supported in a wider way through that institution. Um, but also um, increasingly, and we know this with the Scottish Educational uh, Research Journal, um, that um, journals are going to be available open access and it will be much easier for, for all of us involved in education to, to go in and, and read papers and find out what the current research is uh, and, and get those wider connections. Um, so I think I would bank on the last approach 
I think open access journals is probably the, well, certainly be the easiest way forward. Uh, yeah. But it would be great if that developed for us because uh, it's so important. It just adds such a dimension to what you're doing. Yeah, I think I think I think that's a brilliant answer, and I think you're right. I think I think the answer is going. The, the problem is going to be resolved by the increasing number of journals, including Scottish Education Review, which is open access immediately now uh, and very easily accessed, and and that's increasing in other journals. That make it much easier for people who may be working at home or working from school to access some of the really live research that's available in journals. Thanks, Morag. Super, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Morag, for your response. Any other comments or questions? This is your chance. Lindsay's put a comment into the chat. So, Stephen, it's directed to you as well. That was a fantastic question. Thank you. It's been something I've been thinking about going into schools we can reflect on so easily at the moment and access academic literature. And also thank you, Morag, for the answer. Lovely. <laughs> good question, a good answer. Brilliant. There we go. Sorted. You'd think we'd planned it, which we didn't. But... We didn't. No, not at all. <laughs> Right, folks, if there's no other questions, I'm quite happy to leave it there for just now. The next stage would be to move into the workshops. The workshops will start at 11 o'clock, just in case anybody's got any diary appointments, just to allow us 11 o'clock start. Last thing I just need to say is thank you very much, Morag, for your time this morning. It was a very interesting keynote to kick off this event. And also my thanks to Stephen for the Poverty and Education Workshop that will come up at 11, and also to Diane as well. So thank you for the Inclusive Education Network. So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you again at 11 o'clock. Thank thanks, everybody. Bye.